Hi everyone, right, welcome to this video, it's called Ninja Gossip number one because I'm having a little bit of a joke that if I do something on historical ninjutsu, nobody cares, but if I do something on ninja gossip, like they said this and they said that, everybody's all over it. So, uh, well, <laughs> that's why it's called that. Right, um, first of all, this is a video response to Mr. Stephen the Bansen Shukai Nojiri, uh, who has absolutely tore me a new one online. He basically uh, gave me a right old good telling off, did Stephen. Now I've talked to Stephen for many years, um, and we've chatted back and forth uh, on Skype many, many, many times. We've spent hundreds of hours on Skype together. And uh, he, if you want to watch his video about him totally telling me off, it's down below. For those of you who are keeping up to date with it, you'll know what's going on. Right, in there, Stephen tells me off for trying to resurrect the absolutely dead online community. And he says, Anthony, the ninjutsu community is dead online. Stop trying to resurrect it. You're, you know, you're flogging a dead horse. The enemy are defeated. Leave them to be defeated. So what does he mean by this? Basically, I'm trying to resurrect this idea of, you know, come on guys, come on, let's, let's join together, let's go forward, you know. You know, that positive attitude, I think it's called. Um, and the... Uh, and he, the bit about defeated enemies is we used to sit on Skype and of course you've got to plan your strategy. When you do warfare you have to plan strategy. You have problems, you have you know bits you do right, bits you do wrong, uh, bits you have to take back. Oh, okay, right, I need to get rid of that video, that's too aggressive, all this type of stuff. So of course we have to project what we're going to do. Now, um, the simple thing is the fact that the, the historical manuals are not available to the general public. Some people had them in some small areas, but the general public, 99.999% of people, just didn't have them. So we said, what's going to be the result of this? Well, for what's our goal? And the goal was, let's get rid of the ninja archetype, the black mask assassin who runs around throwing shuriken, doing a specific form of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we said, let it, our goal, our warfare goal, is to get rid of that image and replace it with a historical, uh, the, the historical truth. And uh, we said, what happens to all these people, the ninja archetypes, afterwards when they've been defeated? And it wasn't a case of, all oh, that we've won. It's a simple case of, I think, the truth will just outdo the, the fantasy. I've learned since then that the fantasy has actually got a stronger appeal than the truth. But these people who, like, obviously live in the ninja archetype, ninja fantasy, can't come out anymore and say, yeah, we do this ninja hand hand combat. Yeah, we throw shuriken as ninjutsu. Yeah, yeah, you know, we do kujig. We're, we're ninjas. That's all gone now, you know. For, not for the general public, but for the, for the dedicated ninja online community. You guys watching this, you full know that's not a truth. So when he says we've defeated the enemy, that's what he means. We've uh, achieved our goal. It took about eight years to do. And uh, the, the main ninja community now just, you know, all agree. Even my worst, you know, my total enemies agree. Yes, it's not hand-to-hand -hand combat, Anthony. Yes, it's, there's no shuriken in ninjutsu. Um, which is a shame, because I love shuriken. It's the best thing in the planet. I even love ninja claws. You know, I'm like, please be real, please be real. I just, you know, go shuriken. Well, anyway, you all know the story of shuriken. So... I'd like to say Stephen Nogiri is 1 billion percent correct on Anthony stop talking to the ninja community online. Stephen is totally correct on this. But the difference is I think Stephen is maybe over realistic, uh, a realist or maybe over pessimistic. I am an, a total romantic. In my head, I am like dancing with bells on, dressed in white. Come on guys, look at the ninja stuff. And everybody's going, oh, Messiah, like a Monty Python film. Look at it, look at it. Praise the band Sensu Kai. Of course, the reality is, is it's just not that. That is just not gonna happen. So um, basically, my response to Steven is, I'm a romantic. I have it in my head that every so often, come on, you know, other people will have it a good heart and think, let's get together and do it. Because it's not, I can't be told off for that. Getting people together in a shared idea to love something is not a bad thing. It's not bad. To separate into different groups and hate each other for loving the same thing is ridiculous and retarded. So let, let you know what I mean, let's get that right down. But. I'm not a realist. Stephen's a realist and gets it right and he's like, I'm oh, never going to work. I'll do it, Stephen! I will do it! No. No, I didn't. 
So, um, so basically, I'm doing the Martin Luther King. If I have a dream, not the day of this, not the day of this, but the day of all ninjas. So you know, right. Stephen says, what is the purpose of learning ninjutsu? I do agree with Stephen from a historical point of view that you, you need a purpose to learn ninjutsu. But I don't agree with him today that you need I think the purpose of self-improvement is a perfectly adequate reason. But if that's not enough for Stephen, then you'll know what I'm talking about if you've listened to Stephen's videos. I'll put his stuff below. I think the purpose that goes above self-improvement is to um, is to correct skewed history. The history of the ninja. The ninja were a very real people, an extremely real people. They were warriors. I'm not going to go down the hearts on for heroes and all that and look at our war veterans because we don't have that emotional connection to you know these people. They, they, they live thousands of miles away, hundreds of years ago. But I do have some form of connection, saying I want to get that right. I can't explain why. But I want to get that right. That's just one of my, it's imprinted in me that when I see it being done wrong, that's why I get aggressive towards people who are doing it wrong. It's like, oh, I'm dressed in black, we're the secret, we're the real ninjas. No, no, that's absolutely not right. Get them, you know, unleash. So I get really angry with it. So the purpose is to correct the history for the general public. We have now almost corrected the history for the, um, the what's it called, online community. The next step is the general public. That's where we're looking at Watch Mojo stuff. You know, Watch Mojo, 250,000 people, that's where we need them to understand. I actually have a choir in my bedroom of beautiful naked women, uh, if you can hear that. Right. So, what is the purpose of doing it? What is the purpose of everyone getting together? Because there's history that needs to be corrected. And there's the legacy of the ninja that needs to be corrected. And if that's not big enough for you, Stephen, get out. That's, that, that's totally big enough. It's a good enough cause. So, uh, I'm going through my notes here, guys. Right. Real ninjutsu has to revolve around the scrolls. One thing that I think Stephen's not getting or maybe not taking in on board here is the fact that there's a definite system here. There's a definite, sorry, let me get this my words right. There's a definite progress. Sengoku period, you had the real ninja doing the real job, teeth to the ground, doing it. They end, the families start to dissolve or, you know, become poorer. And then there's a burst of people trying to capture ninjutsu. They're absolutely trying to capture it. So you've got stage one, real ninjas. Stage two, ninja descendants who are real samurai or real half samurai who are collecting their real information from their ancestors. Whether they've changed it, skewed it, added to it, we don't know. And then there's the modern claimants. The simple fact of the matter is nobody can deny, nobody can deny that the Bansen Shukai, the Shoninki, Iga and Koga, Nimpin and all these are pure and absolutely central to the study of ninjutsu. Not some guy in the 20th century, not some guy in the 21st century. That, that will never wash. You can't go to a dispassionate observer and say, right, we've got this real manual from like the real times, comes 60 years after, still within living memory, but these people are from that time, and you've got somebody from the 21st century who says they're wrong. Uh, but he hasn't done any research about it, it's just he says he has the truth. That's never going to wash in a real world situation where emotion is taken out. So, when you say, Stephen, there's like, we can't have an online community, what's the point? I think there is, there's an anchor point. The anchor point is the scrolls. Before I brought them out, Krista, Bansen Shukai, Hatsumi, Bansen Shukai, everyone's Bansen Shukai, Shoninki, Don Roll is Shoninki, Shoninki. He was Mr. Shoninki, wasn't he? Uh, I give out little bits of it. All these people are like, look at the scrolls, I've got this scroll. Stephen Turnbull books, Hatsumi books, Ninja books, oh look at the Bansen Shukai. All there, everybody loved it. Now, they're detached. So my point being is that is the anchor point. They have skewed their emotional understanding of the situation and gone, okay, no, no, just get away from that. And you're like, why? Oh, I don't like Anthony. I don't like what he's doing. He, he basically says, what I do is wrong, so I don't like him, so I will get away from the Bansen Shukai. You're like, what? The core of the thing you love the most, which even the people who teach it to you in Japan, the claimants, actually read and study from, 
you're going to distance yourself from that. So I think it's not such a bad idea that everybody has their own groups and they come together for the show, Ninki, for the band Senshuka, for those things that were there long before me and they'll be here long after me. There's no reason why everybody can't look to the top of the mountain from a different peak, but you can't ignore the fact that the mountain is there, the show Ninki, the band Senshuka, they are the core, they are the hub. That is the only place you will find historical ninjutsu. The only place. It's a shame we don't have it from the Sengoku period, that would be mind-blowing, but we don't. We have it only from the early peace period onwards, realistically, uh, which is not, you know, some are debated. So, that's my point, Stephen. Ninjitsu has a central focus that everybody can attach to. There's no reason, all they have to do is let go of ego. You, I know you're into, but let go of ego, don't worry about it, let's connect to this central point. Krista doesn't have to go for dinner with Dean, you know, Don doesn't have to turn up and have dinner with you blah 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 but everybody can focus that way and learn and they don't have to agree Stephen nobody has to live in this rainbow like magic land they don't have to agree they can all argue all day for all I care as long as they're arguing about the shonen kit as long as they're arguing about the Bansen Shukai but at the minute they're not they're saying you're fake you're fake you're fake you're fake you've cut your balls off you're fake you're like really guys is this the level we're at you've studied warfare and you're at that level that's it so no so, um, why not try um, Ichigun Ichimi? Right, my concept of Ichigun Ichimi was bring everybody together, let's have fun, let's, you know, the same thing, ninja community under this banner. Totally failed. Crash dive. Poof, gone. But, so Stephen's like, it's a fool's errand. But I know it's a fool's errand, but things don't, great things are not achieved through doing nothing. I knew it was an almost impossible task. I genuinely, naively thought it could be done. Now, I don't think it can be done with the existing ninja community. Stephen is totally right, it is. I'm beating a dead horse. But imagine if I never tried that. Where would I be, personally, apart from nowhere? Do you know what I mean? Oh, do you remember the guy who tried to get us all together and tried to get us all to like each other and tried to create a community of people who shared knowledge and information? Do you remember him? Yeah. It didn't work, but what a great idea. Imagine if it had worked. Also, if it does work in 20 years, Stephen, then people will look back and say, He's been trying that for 20 years, he's been at that. Whereas you said, if it comes about naturally, I will get on it. That's called jumping on the bandwagon. So if it, you wait 20 years and it happens, Stephen, and you jump on the bandwagon, and there's hundreds of thousands of people back involved in ninjutsu, and you want to jump back in there, you've got to remember that you didn't put 20 years of work in. So you're basically just stealing somebody else's thunder then, and you've created nothing and just stole from somebody else's work. If you know what I'm saying there, Stephen. So, I think this waiting for it. I get what you're saying, Stephen. I know you personally very well, and I understand what you're saying. But we'll wait for the, you know, the the uh, situation to get to a point where it naturally evolves. That's absolutely fine. You're probably right. That's probably best. But then I won't be jumping on the bandwagon. I'll have been there digging the hole, getting it sorted. If you know what I mean. So, um, right. Uh, so basically, we. I, I'm just going to re-go over this. We don't have to get along. People can argue till they're sick in the face. They can argue and argue as long as they argue over the correct thing, which is the manuals. So somebody could say, oh, this translation I disagree with because of this word and this word goes there. And we could refine different parts of it. But, you know, that doesn't exist. Nobody wants to do that. Me and Stephen used to do it all the time, guys, on Skype. And Stephen's got loads of different ideas about the Manson Shukai. But on the whole, they're 95% the same. Stephen's idea, mine and Yoshia's idea, there's a 5% gap where we argue about, but that's great because we spent hours building a friendship, we're friends by the way, me and Stephen, and um, building a friendship and, and creating ninjas and making us understand different things. I was like, yeah, this is good. Um, now, Stephen says about evolution. People have evolved and move on. I 1 billion percent disagree with you, Stephen. I do not think those people have evolved in the slightest. I think they've devolved. Um, I don't agree that uh, getting nastier, getting more horrible, becoming more isolated, going away from the original texts, not concentrating on actual shinobi information, that is not evolution. Yep. What you mean by that is they give up and they went somewhere else. That's what you mean. I am never going to give up. I am here till the end. I am here 100%, even through the hard times, through the good times. I'm just going to keep going. Yep. That's my goal. Uh, as long as I can possibly do it. And that's not giving up. That's evolution. That's moving forward, understanding more each time. When you say that these people have evolved, I, I totally disagree. Um, what was it? We look at Dan Harmon. People bullied him. 
till he basically went home, beat his wife, she threatened to leave him, he hung himself, yeah? And, and that was all done with an, by people who've be, become evolved? No, not at all. Uh, that argument, of course, you know, goes round and round, but in my head, it was, Dan Hammer was clearly not 100% there. Just let him enjoy himself, you know what I mean? There's some people on this in this community who are not quite there, but it's their little way of getting around. There's no reason to attack him. Nobody's taking him seriously. But that's pushing it too far. And, uh, for example, um, Dean dressing up as a woman and chopping a banana off for a penis. Admittedly, I rolled around in laughter, I'll be honest with you. Not at Chris now, but I rolled around in absolute <laughs> stitches at it. But that's not evolved. That's actually pretty ridiculous and a bit... A bit cheap and a bit of a crap shot to be honest and uh, so no as he moved on probably um, but I did like Dean's response video to I quite like Dean's response video where he said he's never done that he just does it to correct people so yeah all right Dean I'll give you that but I wish you'd correct people in a more you know academic manner or in maybe a more educated manner or in maybe a less aggressive or negative manner there's no reason for impoliteness in this world whatsoever manners make of the man yeah just just be polite absolutely. Even if you're beating someone up, be polite about it. Um, right. This idea, Stephen, that, you know, people have got other things to do. I'm going to go on to this a bit more in a bit. But this idea that um, people have got, you know, their busy lives, Anthony, and all this. Then I would say, why? Then if you're too busy to get involved, then your opinion doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Because if you're too busy to concentrate on the, you know, this, this, this research is going fast. And it's a case of everybody's getting up to speed now. And if you're falling behind or you're going somewhere else, then don't worry about it. Crack on somewhere else, you know. So what you're saying, oh, Anthony, you know, don't drag them back. I agree with that, Stephen. Yes, I agree with that. We shouldn't drag them back. Totally agree. But those people also shouldn't really have the say in the community that, you know, they do like, you're wrong for this reason. But, but you don't even do videos on ninjutsu anymore. You know, one in three months. Or something like that, but you're a YouTuber who puts videos up all the time. You don't do anything about ninja, but then your opinion should matter. Do you know what I mean? But and by that I mean they're not doing it in the background. They're actually not just doing it. Um, so in my in my opinion, Stephen, giving up is not okay. This idea that oh I've got other things to do. I'm busy at work. So, you know, everybody's busy. Everybody's got things to do. But in your a lot your spare time. So if you've got Four hours a week spare time, uh, like actually free time for you. There you go, you've got four hours of free time for you. If you want to spend two of them doing ninjutsu, you know, studying it, that's fine. Everybody can find two hours a week, you know, and, and you build it up over a year, that's a good, you know, as long as you do it progressively, it's good. So I don't actually agree with that, Steve. Um, so I do actually still want to build this ninja community, I really do. And I genuinely believe, now I may be wrong, but I genuinely believe that it will happen. But I think, we're in like, we're coming up to the first decade of this. Probably in 2018 will be in the first decade of, of me doing what I've done. Because about 20, 2008, 2009, I started really sort of like putting my research out there. Um, and you know, and starting to, do, I did Shinobi Soldiers 1, Shinobi Soldiers 2, and it was going there. So up to our first decade. And what I want to say is, basically, I think now we've got another 10 years to go. This is my prediction. I think in another 10 years, you're going to get the 15-year-olds now being 25 and being serious about it. So over the next 10 years, we need those people who are 10, 15 years old now, just starting to understand about joining martial arts clubs, looking at the bookshops, oh, ninja. They've got the choice now. We give them the choice of real ninjutsu versus, you know, what a lot of ninja archetype stuff, which is a lot of it's fake. There's some real stuff in there, but there's lots of fake stuff. So we give them the choice. So I think, Stephen, 10 years, you'll start to see a bit of a community rising up again. 20 years, I think you'll see a solid, absolute solid samurai and ninja community back again and, and it being cool again. That is purely my prediction, guys. And Stephen, if you jump on the bandwagon then, I shall come and kill you. Um, right. Um, uh, Travelling to Japan. Right, Stephen. This bit. I, this, you're going to get animated now. You're gonna, I'm going to sit forward and everything. You've had it. So, basically, Stephen has said, oh, you know, not everybody can get to Japan, Anthony. Absolute codswallop. Absolute rubbish. The year is not 1900. It's like, oh, we've got duties of kids. 
So we've got wives. So first of all, let's start with those who are single. I can't afford it. Okay, you can't afford it, but we've been doing this, Stephen, for eight years now together. Yeah, roughly, between six and eight years, something like that. I worked it out, basically, if you save one pound a day, yep, yeah, for approximately six years, you end up with about 2,000 pounds. Yep, 2,000 pounds would get you an awesome two weeks in Japan. You don't need 2,000 pounds, but it would. So if you put away one pound a day for six years, which we've already done six years, Stephen, it's been done. So for every day, instead of having a Coca-Cola can, you just had a pound in there, you'd have more than, you could probably have enough in about four years. So let's just say if you put a pound away a day, guys, a pound, by the way, is about a dollar fifty. So you put that away every day, by now, Stephen, we'd be sitting in Japan. So when you say, oh, Ant's asking me to zoom off and chill out and sit in Japan. No, I've been asking for six years, Stephen. And you've said the same thing. I don't have enough. You know, it's too expensive. It is expensive, guys. Don't get me wrong. But it's only expensive if you're spending your money on something else. So do, my question to you is, those who've never been to Japan, do you prefer Coca-Cola, McDonald's versus a trip to Japan or not? Now, that's only saving, um, you know, probably four or five hundred dollars a year, right? You could, maybe three hundred dollars a year you could do it, you know, whatever, that you would work it out. But basically in five years, if you saved a little bit every day, you could have enough. That doesn't include getting an extra job and doing some part-time work. That doesn't include not drinking beer, you know, buying computer games, you know, having other stuff. How much do you want to go to Japan? How much do you love Japan and, and that thing versus Coca-Cola computer games? If you have got Coca-Cola around you guys, if you've got computer games around you, if you've got little bits of a nice pair of new shoes that you wanted that were like $100, whatever, and you've not been to Japan, then you don't want to go to Japan. That's the truth. So I really can't stand it when people say, oh, we can't get that, I don't have enough money. Now, oh, I've got kids. So in five years, you need 10 days in Japan. Your wife won't give you a 10-day break. In five years, you married the wrong girl. Yep, get a new wife, simple as that. If you can't go away for 10 days with your friends or with someone or on your own, in five years, there's some problem in your personal life. Just simple as that. Um, right, I wanna now tell you guys about getting to Japan. There's two ways you can do it. You can do it, I roughly say you can do it for 1,500 pounds, realistically. That's about a 600 pound flight, about 10 days in cheap hotels. Or the other one, which my friend said, is get a flight on a cheap, about 500 pounds again, cheap flight. Uh, you have to look for them to get cheap flights, and they do come up, and you just do a bit of research, and then take a tent with you, camp in Japan, go in May, go in April or May. The end of April, May, you'll have the most golden week. You can camp there, there's loads of beaches you can go on, you can go pretty much, you could actually camp in a Weno Park, they have homeless uh, shelter thing there. You could do it. You can get really cheap food out in Japan. is really cheap. Trains around Tokyo, really cheap. Not a problem. You could do it for a budget if you really needed to. So anybody who tells me they can't get to Japan and it's been eight years, they, they don't like Japan. They're just lying. They've got no self-control. Yeah. I'm not just talking about you, Stephen. I'm talking about everybody. I'm like, I've got to Japan, but I can't afford it. Really? So, Stephen, you're bordering on that, that thing which I hate as a person. And that is when people say to me, and they, they do it all the time, my friends especially, it's okay for you, you're lucky. I'm what? Lucky? I saved up um, about £20,000, about fifteen to £20,000 sterling in savings in my you know life you know to support buy a house and you know you know basically get a deposit down and you know life in general and i just did this i went japan let's go to japan boom six months three months there then i borrowed another ten thousand pounds then i got another ten thousand pounds in from different places spent that again i basically just went and got Loads of cash. A lot of it was my cash. Don't get me wrong. I'd been saving for years since I was 18 years old because I wanted to. I was very. I'm very good with money. It's like, uh, okay, we'll save some cash. I'll get this. Do that. I'm excellent at that type of thing. I can um, budget really well. And I was like, right, let's go. Let's do it. And then I was like, I've saved all this money all my life. And it took me about a second to decide whether to burn it all or not. And I did burn it. Now I'm talking. It was like I had to pay Yoshi. Can we go here? Okay. 
let's get dinner, let's do this, let's get this scroll, oh okay, the scroll's $50, the scroll's $100, I paid £400 just for a Shonen Key copy I already had a copy of from 19th and 20th century. I just literally, guys, got cash and burnt it in the machine of this, yeah? So when people say to me, it was okay for you, that, that's what you do, it's because I gambled. I, there's, I learnt it from my father, to be honest. Of all things I learnt from my father, it was, he was like, gamble it, just do it. Just go and get it done. If, you, if you're cautious, you never get anywhere. So all those people who can't even save up a pound a day, and I have blown tens of thousands of pounds on this project, yeah? Because I know it's worth it in the long run. I know it's worth it. And uh, this is why I'm here talking to you and you're listening to me. So those people who say that, rubbish, Stephen. It's not all you have the ability, Anthony. You're lucky, Anthony. Rubbish. But instead of that, I want to tell you about my other friend. I've got a friend. I'm not going to tell you who it is. But he was, uh, he's older than me, and he started going to Japan in the 1980s. And he got, this was in the time in England when you had amazing credit card uh, appeals. They just gave you credit after credit after credit. Tens of credit cards would give you. And he was like, he fell in love with Japanese warfare. So he spent, in the 1980s stroke up to the 90s, over like a 10 year period, he spent £90,000 sterling. 90,000, that was dearer than most houses in England at the time, and he spent it on going to Japan over a 10 year period. His child was born, he was like, made sure it was okay, made sure there was enough money. Grandmother came round to see the children with the mother, went back to Japan, did a few more weeks, yeah? Now, he got in ridiculous amounts of debt, and then, do you know what he did? He spent 10 years studying the art of war. I'm not joking, he studied the Bansen Shukai, the Shoninki, the Nimpiden, he studied Yagyu, he studied um, the Book of Five Rings, he studied the art of war with a real Japanese master, with a, you know someone who's studied all his life and went to war in Japan, uh, you know, obviously with the Chinese and with the Americans, and he studied it. And you know what he does now? He owns almost two million pounds in uh, two million pounds in property through strategy and warfare, through thinking using Japanese techniques, through thinking using ninja techniques, and he sits on the boards of different companies and he gets to do anything he wants, drives motorbikes, takes me out for meals all the time, and don't worry about the cash. He's not rich, rich, but he's very well off. And do you know how he did that, guys? Through principles of ninjutsu. You can make yourself rich through principles of ninjutsu. I can't, because I'm trying to do it through being an author, but he does it through business strategy. Absolutely makes it work for him. So those people, first of all, who can't borrow £2,000 to get to Japan, if you don't like to borrow money, save for five years. Those people who say they can't get to Japan, absolute codswallop. You can. And if you can't afford it, save up. And if you've got the balls, Spend it and get there. Do you know what I mean? But make sure you use it. My other friend used it in a different way. He used strategy to go through business. I used it to get the scrolls published. So now we get paid. And that money I've invested is being paid back there by the scrolls that are being published and the books we have done. That's where the gamble works. So guys, I know this is a long video, but if you're into this ninja gossip, then I presume you're okay with it. Um, so what I want to say is that the reason I created Natori Ryu, bringing back Natori Ryu, was for this very reason. Nobody in the ninja world can get on, but uh, everybody in the ninja world loves samurai arts, they do hand hand combat, even though they think it's ninjutsu, but now that's changing. So I thought, okay, I need some system that gives everybody the freedom to do their own schools, to do their own martial arts, but yet brings them together in one unified organisation, struck one agreeing, agreed, so what's the word I'm looking for, one set of people who agree. That became, it just jumped out at me, Natori Ryu, okay. Because it's a real samurai school. It's got real ninjutsu in it. And it doesn't teach you hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Not, not that we've found anyway so far, none of the scrolls so far do it. There's a little bit here and there we've pulled out. But as you know, on the whole, now we do know that Natoriu students used to study Katori Shinto Ryu. So there's no problem with you studying Katori Shinto Ryu, learning all of their secrets, and then coming to Natoriu for your Gungaku, your Ninjutsu, your Chinese classics, your, you know, all this type of thing that goes along. They, they go perfectly well. Not because I invented it or made it that way, because that's the way the samurai did it. 
You can't really study. It's, it's a bit, little bit against samurai policy to study two schools, two sword schools side by side. Uh, you know, there are some schools that you can't study another sword school. But that they don't mean you can't study a sword school and a gungaku school and an archery school. Absolutely. So when Stephen says all archers argue together, it's inevitable. You're correct, Stephen. Absolutely. But all archers don't have a simple central focus, which is real ninjutsu, the scrolls. So if you really, really want to do it, you can be part of the school. Any school you want to be part of and be part of Natoru you, you can have both. I am never trying to take anything from anyone. If you love the school you're in, stay in it and then study Natoru Ryu because it has real ninjutsu. Study the Bansen Shukai because most likely your school is based on it anyway. So anyway guys, right, I'm going to start rounding up there. The choir are singing away there so I need to go and go talk to them again. So basically, I agree with Stephen 100%. I have flogged that horse till it's dead, but I do it on everything. Yoshie, um, Miyako, they always tell me off for this. Anthony, if you try this idea, it'll end in, it won't work. It's, it's not likely to work. Like, for example, if I want to check this scroll, that's a bit dubious, we don't know, is it? They say, oh, forget it. I say, don't matter, $100, buy it, boom, buy it. I look at it, pff, rubbish. But I have got a chart, I just tick it off. That is done. Next, that is done. So, yes, Stephen, you're right. I absolutely need to stop now. And I've got to the end of the avenue. I honestly think this week we've come to the end of the avenue with all the, the online ninja community now, and it's finished. I'm going to come out of that avenue, I'm going to approach the karate people, I'm going to approach the Aikido people, I'm going to approach um, the sword people, just because they may be receptive to, you know, understanding the historical context, to understanding basically reality and the scrolls. And they're not prejudiced against the scrolls, they've got nothing to lose. They'll be like, oh, okay, right, I'll, I'll study this. Right guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that ninja gossip. It's like a soap opera, isn't it? I wish you guys were just as interested in historical ninjutsu. Um, but I'll get back onto those videos soon. Right, everyone, enjoy your evening. Please go and s subscribe to Nigeria's channel. He puts some awesome videos up. He speaks really well. He's got a lovely voice and you can listen to him for hours. It's one of the things everybody says about him. And uh, on the whole, I think his ideas are superb. Some of them go a little bit crazy. But some of mine go a little bit crazy, like trying to put a... So, for example, me trying to put a community together is the craziness. And he's the same. He's got some ideas that go crazy. But on the whole, he's a cool chap, and you'll learn a lot from him. Gway, gway, as he likes to say. So, Stephen, get yourself a response video, and we'll get some ninja drama going on. I don't care. I enjoy being a YouTuber. And the rest of you, keep going. Keep checking. And I would say one last thing is, wake up, guys. Don't worry that it goes against what you learned for 30, 40 years. Don't worry, five years, doesn't matter. Don't waste another 40 doing it. Change now. Uh, right, see you later guys, bye bye.